ask uh, Violetta and Susan to come up. Good to see you. Um, uh, Violetta and Susan are from Friends of Second Marsh, and I've known Violetta for years. We've worked together on Envirothon and other things, but uh, she's the administrative and program director with Friends of Second Marsh and has been with the organization for over 20 years. And Susan is a lifetime member, a longtime volunteer for Friends of Second Marsh. Uh, she's been on the board since 2019, is a community volunteer co-lead for the Friends of Second Marsh Let's Defrag the Marsh uh, project, which I love the name of that, by the way, uh, since the inception and uh, is lead steward of uh, the Friends of Second Marsh Invasive Plant Stewardship Committee. Um, in this presentation, we will learn about Friends of Second Marsh Let's Defrag the Marsh project. So I can see you've already got your screen up. I'll stop talking and let you guys go at it. Thank you so much. Great. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us today to learn about engaging the community through responsible stewardship at Oshawa Second March. Um, my name is Violetta Valanchik, staff, and then this is Susan Ellis, board member. Uh, we are both representing Friends of Second Marsh. Uh, we are calling in from Oshawa, which is on the traditional lands of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island. Um, in the next few slides, I will give you some background about our organization and our focus project, which was created to address invasive Phrygmites in our local wetland. Then Susan will talk about engaging the community through responsible stewardship and do a wrap up with key takeaways uh, before the Q&A. So let's get started. Um, Friends of Second Marsh is a registered Canadian charity and a nonprofit established to protect and preserve Oshawa Second Marsh. Our current focus is interpretation, education, and community stewardship. So where is Oshawa Second Marsh? Firstly, Oshawa is about an hour east of Toronto. Oshawa Second Marsh is located uh, between Highway 401 and Lake Ontario, and it is west of uh, Darlington Provincial Park. Uh, Oshawa Second Marsh is a provincially significant wetland and an area of natural and scientific interest. As one of the last and largest, most diverse coastal wetlands on the north shore of Lake Ontario, um, habitats uh, include marsh, riparian, treed swamp, and barrier beach areas. To the east, it is bordered by McLaughlin Bay Wildlife Reserve, uplands that consist of shrubby meadows and forest habitats. One of the biggest current threats to these natural areas is invasive Phrygmites. In 2020, Friends of Second Marsh embarked upon an ambitious multi-year project called Let's Defrag the Marsh to address invasive Phragmites in Oshawa Second Marsh, McLaughlin Bay Wildlife Reserve, and the surrounding areas. After Friends of Second Marsh consulted with wetland ecologists and recognized invasive Phragmites management expert, Dr. Janice Gilbert, we formalized our plan. Um, our overall project objectives are to restore the quality and quantity of wildlife habitats, to reduce the estimated area of current invasive Phragmites cover, to engage and educate the community about invasive Phragmites, and lastly, to establish an ongoing invasive Phragmites monitoring and alert to action protocols. To date, Friends of Second Marsh and our volunteers have mapped and monitored 19 Phragmites management units and registered them in the Phragmites Adaptive Management Framework, or PAMP for short. We've run educational hikes and installed signs to educate the public about invasive Phragmites and completed on the ground management actions, including spading and biomass on site solarization. 2022 was our milestone year where we completed treatments in McLaughlin Bay Wildlife Reserve of invasive Phragmites using best management practices, including herbicide and mulching and mowing. These actions were contracted to and completed by the Invasive Phragmites Control Center. Susan will now talk about how Friends of Second Marsh uses responsible stewardship to engage our community. Thanks, Violetta. Here. So uh, community engagement and outreach is ongoing. This is how we recruit volunteers and gain support from stakeholders while encouraging responsible stewardship. Friends of Second Marsh defines our community related to the Let's Defrag the Marsh project into four basic categories, citizens, stakeholders, experts, and funders. 
Today, we are going to focus on how we engage local citizens and local stakeholders through responsible stewardship. To have a volunteer, you've got to find a volunteer. And as a small organization, Friends of Second Marsh relies heavily on volunteers. The top three outreach methods, by invitation activities with known contacts and supporters, social media posts to our followers and open to the public hikes, are consistently successful at reaching and cultivating stewardship volunteers. Friends of Second Marsh has recently begun presentations to local clubs and organizations. We are hopeful that these efforts will expand our volunteer resources and perhaps develop into a similar relationship that we now have with longtime partner General Motors, who posts activities to their internal website or organizes team building events for employees and their families. Now you've got your volunteers and you have to meet their expectations. A good volunteer experience encourages volunteers to come back and or become more involved. A well-organized, friendly and fun stewardship activity with less talking and more doing not only demonstrates stewardship techniques, but it reinforces in their memory of how to make a positive impact on the environment. Getting feedback is important. After our pilot Invasive Phragmites stewardship event, we got feedback that our educational intro was too long. So we shortened it and realized there are lots of opportunities for informal learning during the doing. By managing volunteer activities, you can inspire stewardship thinking and in some cases turn an enthusiastic volunteer like the one pictured here, buried in Frag, into a more involved active steward for the environment. Now I'm gonna talk about cultivating support from local stakeholders. There are many stakeholders for our Let's Defrag the Marsh project. For us, key community and environmental organizations are, for example, nature clubs, conservation authority, and other active environmental organizations or research institutions in the area. Property owners are, in this case, many, and it includes government, municipal and provincial, private, commercial, and a provincial park. Key to our early success with primary stakeholders was the support of and consultation with Dr. Janice Gilbert, plus a plan that included the recognized PAMP monitoring system. Early discussions with stakeholders often included an educational component about invasive Phragmites and sometimes a confirmation of our depth of knowledge to establish trust. As we gain momentum, we are expanding our outreach to other nearby property owners. These might be holdings or transportation corridors within or outside the project area that do not have natural areas, but are reinfestation sources. Due to the scope and long-term timing of this project, regular updates are important to keep stakeholders aware of progress, readiness to move to the next phase, and to ensure we are still all in alignment. Here are some key takeaways from our presentation today. Avoid analysis paralysis and get started. Do your homework. There are lots of excellent resources for managing invasive Phragmites. For example, OIPC's best management practices available online. And today, Violetta and I found out a whole bunch more uh, from all these other organizations that are doing the similar things. So this is great to hear. Uh, create clear and specific objectives. Be prepared to educate others, leverage and involve your community to engage them in responsible stewardship. And above all, be flexible. As we've all learned over the last few years of COVID, alternate and recovery plans can be necessary. And lastly, inspire and be inspired. To expand on this last point, Violetta and I were pleasantly surprised that once we started talking about the Let's Defrag the Marsh project, we found many in our community who also had invasive Phragmites management on their to-do list. This discovery of like-minded efforts gives us strength and encouragement to carry on. We wanna leave you with uh, one final thought. Uh, we recognize that invasive Phragmites is not a small problem in Ontario, nor even in Oshawa, but together our community can make a difference to the wildlife and habitats at Oshawa Second Marsh. So thank you for your attention. Um, 
I think we probably have a few minutes for questions if it's available. If a great presentation and update on what's happening uh, at Second Marsh. As someone who lives in Oshawa, I'm always curious to hear see those updates. I'm just seeing here in the Q and A. I don't see anything in the Q and A at the moment, um, but I'm just keeping an eye on if anybody has any questions. Nope. Here comes one. Um, it's a con. Uh, comment, outstanding summary of a well-organized effort, and it's from Abby Obenchain, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Would you be willing to share the slide deck? Yes, we would We would share the slide deck for sure. Yeah, so I would say reach out to Sharon and uh, Violetta if, if you want that, and then also it will be recorded, so you will get a copy of the presentation. Um, yeah, our, um, we'll, we'll put as a, in the chat, we'll put the staff email address where you can reach us, Abby, and then uh, you can send us a question or we'll reply with the copy of the slide deck. Okay, let's, let's check one last time in the Q&A. I think that's all the, oh, there's a chat. So I'm just bouncing between the chat and the Q&A. Um, John Foster is asking, what are you doing with the Phragmites that you have removed? It was mowed and it's just being left on site to uh, mulch itself and to decompose. So the mechanically removed yeah. and then if it's manually removed, we put them in uh, heavy black garbage bags and then they're left on site for solarization and then later we go back and we distribute them. All right. Thank you very much. We